Hey folks, um, our lesson today is about learning how to identify and punctuate introductions and the commas that are associated with them. So again, if you need your note, grab your notebook out, do so now um, and jot down some of these ideas. So let's talk about what introductions to sentences are. Um, and basically they're anything that goes before your first independent clause. Um, and that could be a simple word or a phrase, or it could even be a full dependent clause. Let's take a look at some examples. So yet, why would anyone want to post pictures of themselves so the world can see? Um, I just don't, don't get it. I don't get Instagram. Maybe I'm old. Um, but that word yet is in here before I get to the main part of my sentence. So I'm going to separate that off with a comma. This could also be done with a group of words, like a phrase or a prepositional phrase in this case. So on the other hand, posting all my pictures of trout seems awesome, right? What seems awesome? Well, posting all my pictures of trout, all my pictures, right? That is my subject, posting all my pictures seems awesome. So anything that came before my independent clause, my subject and verb, I'm going to separate off. And this could even be a full dependent clause. So while the class was sleeping, Mr. Estet ate all their lunches. When our dependent clause comes before our independent clause, it's going to act as that introduction, and we're going to need to separate it off with a comma. Um, so here are some formulas that certainly helped me kind of get my head around this formula or, or this kind of structure of a sentence. So Basically, anything that goes before our independent clause is going to get a comma, right? Whether it's an introduction of a single word or a phrase or a full dependent clause, we're going to add a comma. If something is coming after our independent clause, even if it's a full dependent clause, no comma, right? So after my main, the main part of my sentence, I'm not usually going to separate something off with a comma because I've already gotten to the main part of my sentence. People know what I'm talking about. That's kind of what the comma indicates. It's like, hey, I've set you up for something. But here's what I was really talking about. When you give them what you're really talking about first, you don't necessarily need that comma as a separator. And then here was the formula that we learned last um, lesson about independent clauses. So we'd have two independent clauses. If we join them together, we're going to need a comma and a conjunction. So, and these same rules apply for complex compound sentences. This is how we kind of start mixing and matching these rules and putting them together. So, right, we have a dependent clause acting as an introduction, put a comma. Then we have our independent clause. And if I wanted to keep going, I could keep adding on dependent and independent clauses so long as I'm still following these rules. Um, so let's, I'll give you an example here. So if I were to move these around, like say I wanted to put this dependent clause here, I would need to use that comma. So we'd have three commas because I'd go deep introduction, independent clause, coordinated conjunction, and a comma to connect to another e independent clause that I had another dependent clause acting as an introduction to. So it kind of just depends on how you're going to set this up, set your sentences up, and then use these building blocks to go from there. OK, so a good thing to remind you of here is what our coordinating conjunctions and our subordinating conjunctions are. So remember, coordinating conjunctions are fanboys. That's what we're going to use to connect independent clauses together with a comma. And coordinating conjunctions are what we're going to use to signify um, dependent clauses. Sometimes you'll hear me call these swabbies or just dependent clause signifiers. And if you need those acronyms, if those are helpful to you, you can use swabbies because that boils down to since, when, after, because, if. Those are just some of the general swabbies that we have, the subordinating conjunctions. Remember, they serve to in introduce dependent clauses and it kind of marks its importance or its connection to the rest of the sentence. And when they come before our independent clauses and they act as that introduction, that's when they're going to get a comma. All right. Um, so here's some sentence checks that you might want to take a look for um, as you guys are writing. Is if you see a fanboy, if I'm like, ooh, I used that word and or but or so, is there a full independent clause on both sides of that? If so, you need to use a comma and conjunction. Or if I'm using like an introduction or a signal word, like uh, so or since, when, after, because, if, at the beginning of my sentence, that's usually indicating that I'm starting with some sort of introductory material before I get to my main part of my sentence, and I would need to separate that off with a comma. Remember, it doesn't always have to be a full dependent clause. It could just be a single word, but look for those introductions. All right, let's make John Cena proud. I want you to identify where the commas go, what kind of sentence these are. Press pause and give it a shot. Did you do it? John Cena will be angry if you didn't. All right. So here's what it should look like. Um, this first one needs a comma, right? Because I'm starting my sentence with a dependent clause. Um, whoops, and I put the comma in the wrong place. Come on, Mr. Rested. Put that there. Boop. 
much better. Um, this would be a complex sentence, right? Because I've got a dependent clause and an independent clause. Second one, also a complex sentence, but no commas needed. Snow is great because it makes the world look pretty. No comma because my dependent clause is coming after the main part of my sentence. Snow is great. And then I just give the reason why. Um, all right. So just as a quick review, maybe to go back over through your notes, make sure you have what these ideas are. Make sure you'll be able to like recall in memory um, and just remember, be able to understand what these are. So what I would suggest is flip open to a new page of your notes and just write down everything you remember about these kind of six ideas, independent, dependent clauses, fragments and run-ons, coordinate conjunctions, simple sentence, compound, complex sentences, comma splices. Um, this is just a list to try and recall what we've done so far. All right. And then when, of course, when you're done, go back through your notes and check, make sure you remembered everything. All right. Good luck, folks.